Genesis 36. This is the account of the family line of Esau, that is, Edom. Esau took his wives from the women of Canaan, Adah, daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Oholibama, daughter of Anah, and granddaughter of Zibion the Hivite, also Basemath, daughter of Ishmael, and sister of Nebaioth. Adah bore Eliphaz to Esau, Basemath bore Ruel, and Oholibama bore Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau, who were born to him in Canaan. Esau took his wives and sons and daughters and all the members of his household, as well as his livestock, and all his other animals and all the goods he had acquired in Canaan, and moved to a land some distance from his brother Jacob. Their possessions were too great for them to remain together. The land where they were staying could not support them both because of their livestock. So Esau, that is Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. This is the account of the family line of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Esau's wife Adah, and Ruel, the son of Esau's wife Basemath, the sons of Eliphaz, Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Esau's son Eliphaz also had a concubine named Timnah, who bore him Amalek. These were grandsons of Esau's wife Adah, the sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These were grandsons of Esau's wife Basemath. The sons of Esau's wife Aholibama, daughter of Anah, and granddaughter of Zibion, whom she bore to Esau, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs among Esau's descendants. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, chiefs Teman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatam, and Amalek. These were the chiefs descended from Eliphaz in Edom. They were grandsons of Adah. The sons of Esau's son Ruel, chiefs Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These were the chiefs, descended from Ruel in Edom. They were grandsons of Esau's wife, Basemath. The sons of Esau's wife, Aholibama, chiefs, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs, descended from Esau's wife, Aholibama, daughter of Anah. These were the sons of Esau, that is, Edom, and these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Seir, the Horite, who were living in the region. Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anah, Deshan, Ezer, and Deshan. These sons of Seir in Edom were Horite chiefs, the sons of Lotan, Horai, and Hamam. Timnah was Lotan's sister. The sons of Shobal, Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. The sons of Zibion, Allah, and Anah. This is the Anah who discovered the hot springs in the desert while he was grazing the donkeys of his father Zibion. The children of Anah, Deshan, and Oholibama, daughter of Anah. The sons of Deshan, Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Karan. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan. The sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. These were the Horite chiefs, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These were the Horite chiefs, according to their divisions, in the land of Seir. These were the kings who reigned in Edom, before any Israelite king reigned. Bela, son of Beor, became king of Edom. His city was named Din Haba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah, from Basra, succeeded him as king. When Jobab died, Husham, from the land of the Temanites, succeeded him as king. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Badad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, succeeded him as king. His city was named Avith. When Hadad died, Samla, from Masreka, succeeded him as king. When Samla died, Shaul, from Rehoboth, on the river, succeeded him as king. When Shaul died, Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, succeeded him as king. When Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, died, Hadad succeeded him as king. His city was named Pau, and his wife's name was Mehetabel, daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. These were the chiefs descended from Esau by name, according to their clans and regions. Timna, Alva, Jetheth, Oholibama, Elah, Pinan, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Magdiel, and Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom, according to their settlements in the land they occupied. This is the family line of Esau, the father of the Edomites. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him, so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, it is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. 
If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your people drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good, or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad, for a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Welcome to Bible Time. Today, Genesis chapter 36 where we hear about Esau. If you recall, Esau was a twin brother to Jacob and the firstborn to Isaac. He marries many Canaanite women, uh, which God has forbid Isaac to marry Canaanite women. And so they brought, by going to the town where Abraham, hometown, and brought Rebekah as to be his wife, God does not allow them to marry Canaanite women. Um, why is that? Is it because Canaanite women are more not attractive? Or are they not smart? Or what is it about the Canaanite women? Well, because they are going to serve the Lord. And Canaanite women already serve other gods. And when you marry them, then your heart will be drawn away from God to their God. So God has prevented them from marrying Canaanite women. So he marries Canaanite women and God has really blessed Esau. Um, and he had many descendants, many children, and he became a strong nation. And so... God has truly blessed uh, Esau, and all the details of who they were is recorded in Genesis chapter 36. Now, one thing I want to say about that is that if God blesses Esau, who is ungodly, and uh, they are not of people of God, and yet God blesses them so much, how much more blessing would God give to those who belongs to him? And I think about that, how much blessing that he in store for those who follow Jesus and those who are, are living according to his will uh, is um, incomparable to the blessing that they receive, even though they don't know God and they don't live for God. And yet to those who believe in God will be just absolutely uh, blessed by the Lord. Now in Matthew chapter 12 verse 22 through 37 you hear about a man who is in horrible horrible condition. Okay this man was blind and he was mute and he was demon possessed. So if you're blind you can't see anything and if you're mute you can't talk or hear so therefore this person has no way of communicating anything and worse than that he's demon possessed he was brought to jesus and jesus heals him instantly and he's able to to see and to hear and to talk and so and in the right mind the demon has left him and when this happened people were so astonished People were so amazed by the power that Jesus displayed and they asked to themselves, is this the son of David? Which means that they, is this the person that David spoke of, the Messiah, who would heal the land of uh, Israel? And so they were talking among themselves and the Pharisees interrupted and said, 
He has done this in the power of Beelzebub. In other words, he did this in the power of Satan. And Jesus, knowing what was in their heart, he gave three reasons why they are wrong. Now, number one, Satan cannot go against himself. Satan cannot go against evil. Satan to cast out demon, that will be doing something disfavored to Satan. So that will be dumb. So that is the first reason that Satan would do this uh, evil, casting out evil. Number two is that um, Jewish people believe that there's an exorcism. And so there was Jewish exorcism. So when that happened, they believed that it was a power of God that did that. And so Jesus says, why don't you believe I've done this? You believe those people, the Jewish exorcists, but why don't you believe that I have done this in the power of God? And third reason is that the strong man is the one who could hold down. If Satan didn't want this to happen, then he could hold it down. But because I am Jesus the Christ, he is able to overcome this and done healing and cast out demon, which means that Jesus has power over Satan. He has a power of Satan. Now, Jesus spoke of them, those who said that he has done this by, by evil spirit. He says, hey, there's something that will not be forgiven, and that is called blasphemy. If you go against the Holy Spirit, if you reject the Holy Spirit, if you reject Jesus, that cannot be forgiven. Any other sins could be forgiven. But the one thing that cannot be forgiven when you reject Jesus, when you reject the Holy work of the Holy Spirit. And so it is true. God can forgive you, but God cannot forgive when you reject Him as your Lord and Savior. There's nothing that could be done. And so we have to be reminded that, that when we believe in the Lord, that we are accepting God. But when we reject God, then you know what? There's nothing that could be done more for you. You die in your sin, and therefore you will perish. With that, let's pray. God, we thank you for the word you give us today. And Lord, I pray that we would just be the people that share the word of God and to the people who are listening, that they would know clearly, God, you have the power over Satan. That Lord, that you are the, the healer, God, that you are even to the blind and mute and demon-possessed man was well. God, your power overwhelms us. Let us be amazed at what you are able to do and trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen.